Come on, everybody. Let's go. What's that Star Trek phrase? You go where no man's ever been before. <laughs> yeah. You know, so let me tell you, remember Coach's story about, he says something about the creator and they all got crazy on him, he was on TV? Well, I'm downstairs with him and Nick Saban calls me for the speech. And you know that story he gave about Tennessee where Ray Mayer's cutting the grass? I said, Nick, I just got this story from this guy down here, Coach Burt, and it's about, you know, being uncomfortable when you lose the game, Tennessee. Now, if it comes on at 4 o'clock on the Channel 4 that Alabama beat Tennessee and a motivational speaker from Murfreesboro <laughs> gave him the information, he'd be wishing that creator story back. <laughs> yeah, huh? He'd be really wishing. He was all happy at first. I said, you think I just blessed you? I just cursed you. <laughs> he think them people from Tennessee are going to throw some mustard? Mm. Mm. It'd be past the great poop pond when they look at him. Can I do this before we get going? I feel bad. You know, I was going to come hang out with you guys some. I took that call. I'm going to do this, and we'll do this again to end, but just a couple. Is, is there a couple questions I can clear up for anybody right now? Anything I can address for anyone? I'll take a couple before we get after. Yes. Um, so I work with Colton, um, and so obviously our recruiting efforts. Yep. And you talked about obviously it's being coachable, being a good trait. Yep. Whenever you were looking for people to add to a team, what are questions? How do you identify the best team? predictor of the future is the past? Yeah. Tell me about a time. Yeah, open up. Tell me about a time. So what you do, I just did this Royal Cup coffee. We just did a whole day uh, seminar. Tell me about a time where you had a setback and you're looking for specifics. Tell me of a time. Tell me and what you want to do is decide what your standards are. And like I just told Billy Donovan last night, I was talking to coach. He goes, the Chicago Bulls, we don't know how to respond to adversity. Well, then there's your new standard, resiliency. Define it. Say, tell me about a time when you had a setback and you don't want their philosophies you want the exact story because the key to the truth is detail. The, the key to a lie is vague. I, I'm not, I don't want to hear your philosophies. You know, back in the day, you're single, you're dating somebody. And he or she says, you know, my ex said this about me. My ex said this about me. And love's new. So you think, your ex must have been a jerk. You're with him three months. You think your ex has some good insight. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're really doing is tell me of a time and I can go into that all day and then you're you know you're saying so one thing I'll say is Eric tell me the five the five best characteristics you think of, of a finance profession okay now give me Evans number one um, so what you really what if you're gonna play for one of my teams it's ownership so I'd say, okay, Eric, what we believe here is you going out and challenging somebody to become better. Do you believe in that? Yeah. Give me one story. Well, I believe, not I didn't ask you, Eric, about what you believe. I, you know, you want to get connection. I, tell me of the time where you went to somebody and said, you're better than that. Tell me what times like, you didn't listen to coaching. Tell me about the time. You know, and so there was a ball player for, the Chicago, for Pittsburgh Steelers didn't show up to see us six times. They still draft him. The head coach still want to take you. You know why they cut him? You didn't show up. Quit showing up. It ain't hard. <laughs> I, I interviewed this other guy, right? And I eventually left them. And I go, you had three paws. I, I kid you not, I was so stupid. I was going to try to be funny. I go, you have three paws of marijuana. How come? He goes, it was a hard year, tough year. I go, what happened? He goes, you know, I had three babies. I'm so, you know, I said, your girlfriend had triplets. <laughs> You know why he quit playing, why they eventually cut him? Smoke of marijuana. It's going to show again. You know, that's not always the case. Somebody has these religious experiences. But if they did it before, y'all going to get it again. For the most part. People do change, but the problem is we think we're going to change them. I like Muhammad Ali's on a plane one time, and the flight attendant says, uh, Sir, 
put on your seatbelt. He goes, Superman don't need a seatbelt. She says, Superman don't need no plane. <laughs> put on your seatbelt. <laughs> you don't need to be superwoman or superman. You're going to get it again. So decide what you're looking for and look for stuff in the past. Tell me about the time you came back. Tell me about the time you didn't come back. Tell me about it was a big challenge. Tell me exactly what, you're, what you thought, how you did it. Tease it out. Can I take one or two more before we get at this? Anything else I could take after anybody? What are some challenges you're trying to overcome in your business? Change, everybody. What's a challenge in my change? And you, you, you want to be agile. You want to keep on getting a new vision. You want to stay out of self-pity. And you want to say that um, how you frame it means everything. I like, I really like what Billie Jean King said. She goes, pressure is a privilege. Once you frame it, you see it different. But you say it's awful, different parts of your brain goes. So like tomorrow, I'm, I'm in L.A., but I'm doing six different Zooms. So what's different? You know, I, I'm, I'm right going to, on a plane ride, six different talks. I'm boom, 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 boom. And the prep calls and that. Mayor just doing contract. It's different. It changed. It's just really quick. So I can sit and live in circumstance. So I can sit and live in vision. One or the other. And so you just have to keep on saying this changed. I have to get a strategy to change with. But I don't know. I don't know what's coming. Something's coming. I don't know what. I didn't see none of this. Did you? No, I didn't see none of it coming. But it's going to be a constant change. I think the other thing that I think is the biggest challenge you're out here speaking I think you have to be very careful because I think that today's world, people don't want to come up and correct you. They want to take out your career and you got to be careful. Mm-hmm. And you got to be real careful. A little paranoia. I told a joke I got on Reader's Digest uh, a week ago and I, you, would have thought I, you would have thought I got that thing out of like some kind of bathroom wall. You know, and the, this woman didn't, like Coach said, she didn't come to me. She went to like the president. You got to get rid of him. I got out of Reader's Digest. You know, uh, you know, laughter's the best medicine. Come on. But I, you got to be careful. So I think, I think like a little bit paranoia, you got to be careful. You know, I think because I'm speaking. And so I have this uh, offer to go do this thing called the head coach on uh, Showtime, where I'd be six episodes of me working with, uh, with Cal Bush, uh, Kurt Bush, uh, because he's going over to uh, Jordan Racing. And it's going to be working with the pit crew of Monster backing it. Well, what, well sooner or later, I'm going to say something. I don't know what. You know, hey, he's with Alabama. I'm from Auburn. Let's go burn his house down. I mean, so, I don't I'm not just saying it. Please don't put that out there. <laughs> I just did it. Please. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you see? Something like that. <laughs> Didn't mean nothing by it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't mean that. I, I, that was just an example of public world, but that's an issue now, you know, and you, and you just got to be careful. I think you get rid of And the third is make sure you connect with it. But I'm, you know, I'm in demand. I, I'm, my other thing is just saying no and picking and choosing, you know, what I want to do. But change, being careful. Out here, you say one thing, they ain't. You know, they're going to come up and say, like, Eric, like, you said this, and I care about you. Would you think, think about it? No, no, no. Who's Eric's boss and the boss's boss? And let's make sure Eric don't work no more because I like watching him and his, and his family starve. That's what you got to watch. I don't mean to be negative, but that's what you got. You got to be careful. Any last one I can hit? Question. Yes, sir. I like connection first, and I and I, I I like feel felt found and explain to people that you've been there before and you under. We I was in, I was up in a. First, you have to listen. I was in Indianapolis yesterday, and we were at a restaurant. And after we got done, I was working with people from Jackson National, and I had to do got to do a Zoom with the leadership at Alabama. So we were at a restaurant and they put us out on the bulk out in the like area that's a patio. And I'm doing the I'm doing my I, and the guy was with me, Marlo. He's watching. I'm working with the leadership on a Zoom with Alabama getting us ready for this game. So a woman comes by and says, hey, that guy with you, he's an a-hole. I'm like, oh, yeah. 
Uh, and so I just listened to her. Yeah, Heath, go please. It was her birthday. He's an a-hole. And I said, whatever happened, man, we'll talk to him. I apologize. I don't know who she's talking about, right? He was, there was a third guy with us. So we're driving to the airport. I said, maybe we should call him and talk to him. I said, so we call him. I said, what happened? He goes, well, the, she came in and said, why are they out on that patio? We can't go there. It's, it's, it's uh, her effing birthday. And he's the only one allowed to go and F out there. And he goes, well, he's out there doing a Zoom for Alabama. Well, who in the F is out? After we got done, I thought he messed up. He said, by the fifth time she told me to go be fruitful, multiply with myself, he said, I said, he did say, he said, could you please shut up? <laughs> I'm just glad I listened to him first and understood what was going on. And I, then you go, I like, hey, I've been there before. Can I show you what I found? You know, can I show you? You know, and I just said, look, never argue with the idiot. They'll pull you down their level. They beat you with all their experience. Yeah. You know, just God bless you. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know what that's about. We'll get, you know, and he could have, he just got frustrated. Just let it go. I don't, you know. You know, I, I, one of the phrases I say is just let the small negative things happen so you get the big pauses. No. What's he doing out there? I don't know what he's doing. She, he didn't know. Don't explain it. I don't know. Well, no one F else got to eat. I don't, yeah, I don't know what that is, man. And here's the wild part. The patio was closed. It was, it was closed anyway. They just let us out there to do it. So I think the best way, listen, connect, understand where they're, because the problem is most problems are emotional and we're trying to deal with logic. And you take it from emotional logic by letting them feel understood. Yeah. So that's my deal. Now, you also use where you, where you, this is very important, where you lay it out of what, if you keep going down this path, what's going to yeah. happen. And here's, an alter, here's the alternative like he did with his dad. Right? Yeah. You, you lay out, like you show them the consequences. If you keep going down this path, here, here's, the, here's the consequences of what's going to happen. Right? Now, now here's the alternative right. choice that you can make so you don't have those consequences. When we said it to him, I, I said it kind of said, look, I, I, I understand, you know, what you, what you did. But the possible outcome is if she were to call and talk to some suchy such, and say, this is what you did, even though all you said is, could you please shut up? That could end your career. You're making hundreds of thousands of dollars doing this. The alternative is, you know, let me listen, let me understand. And I level and say, I don't know what that is, ma'am. You know, you didn't have to get in there and defend or do anything. So that's kind of what you do. If you go down that road, in today's environment, they can find the president of that comp our company we were with yesterday in New York, and now you're trying to clear back up, get back up. But we just listened to him first. And then first, we, me and Marla looked at us and said, that's a completely different story than what we heard the first time, right? So you just listen to that deal. So I am going to let Coach Burt kick this off, but what we want to get into now is let's get concrete in some plans in y'all going to the next level. And so we're going to get after this thing with what, what do you do as, you know, here's what I call them, the Elkoites realize. You, when you're with me long enough, you know, they know what I'm going to say. So watch this. What we're going to do in the second half is you don't live in circumstance, you live in vision. And so we're going to go into that and say, here's how we do that. This is how you're battle tested. Here's what you do with everything. Here's how you're resilient. And we're going to get into goals nitty gritty goals and clearing out the mental clutter. So tell somebody next to you before coach starts talking, get ready. We're going to go to the next level. Get tell them. The and if Tennessee wins, if Tennessee loses tomorrow, he's going to the next level in the news. That's all I got. I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty, pretty cool when you're sitting down there having lunch with Dr. Elko and he says, excuse me, I got to take this. Nick's calling. And it's Nick Saban. And then I hear him talking about some of my stuff to Nick Saban. I'm like, this is pretty good here, right? <laughs> <laughs> so what he's saying is if what we talked about today helps Alabama beat Tennessee, then you know where it all originated right here, okay? That's why we'd be in trouble. Um, the battlefield of the mind and, and is, is where a lot of the activity takes place. If you, if you were a coach like me and you hear what people say all day long, like, like what they say, what they say to themselves. How do they start their day? How do they plan? Because we're about to get into goals, okay? And um, 
I'm very intentional about what I write down. I have that exercise A to B that you saw me do earlier. I, I counted on my Remarkable. I've done it 64 times in the last 30 days. So I'll be on a plane tonight to Orlando, and I'll literally pull out my Remarkable, and I'll put A. This is where I'm at. B, this is my desired outcome. And then I'll write down what is prohibiting me from going from A to B. And I look at it like this, knowledge, skill, desire, or confidence. I don't know how to get to B. If I did, I'd already be there. So I, I need to reach out to somebody who knows how to do it, right? Or I need, I need some, right? B, I don't have the skill to get there. And, that, and I see this with a lot of people. I believe your income is in direct proportion to your skill level. Money doesn't buy you freedom. Skills buys you freedom. The people who have the strongest skills make the most money, right? So, so maybe I don't have the skill to get there. Maybe I don't have the, the prey drive or desire to get there. I think I do, but I really don't. Or I don't have the confidence to get there. Now, that goes back to the whole person, body, mind, heart, and spirit. Okay? Most people, when they're trying to go from A to B, but when's the last time you sit down with a pencil paper or whatever, remarkable iPad, and literally drew up where you're going and what you're trying to do? I'm doing a couples retreat with my wife Thursday through Sunday in Florida. One of the biggest things people walk out of that couples retreat with and say, we got, now we have a vision for our marriage that we didn't have. Now we've got alignment. That's what a lot of people say. Now we're on the same page. Because what? So my wife and I, once a month, we go to Bonefish uh, here in Murfreesboro, and they have um, white you know, tablecloths, and we take a pen, and we sit there and draw up what we're going to do. That's a date night. Okay, so we draw up, what do you want to do in 2022? What's your, what are your dreams? Where do you want to go? How do you want this business to look? What do you want me to not do in 2022? What's causing a lot of friction for us right now, right? How do we redesign this? And literally, that's what we do on date nights. It's, it's a lot of fun to us, right? You're like, be, it'd be great being married to that guy. <laughs> but here, here's the deal. That's, now what are we doing? Vision. We've got goals. We've got dreams. We've got hopes. We've got ambitions. What I find with most people is, is at some point in life, they give up on a lot of their dreams. And they just, they, they go to an occupation, which occupies their time and which they receive a paycheck for. Okay? And they kind of, they don't distribute their talents to the world at a very high level. And then they get into this, this cycle of complacency. Right? We started with good intention. We had a bunch of dreams. Then we, right? So my B's are very clear. I want 1,000 people in my coaching program. I want to make the new book a Wall Street Journal bestseller. I want to open Greatness Factories, the first one being in Nashville. Right? I've, then I've got certain goals to be a dad, husband. Those are my B. And I'm writing those things out over and over. And I ask, what's keeping me from getting there? So every night I sit down and map out my next day. And when he gets into nitty-gritty, nitty-gritty is daily. Getting down intimate with it, right? Just really getting deep with your goals. And... and Unfortunately, that's just not what most people do. So, so, Don, let me ask you a question. How would you be better on Monday if you didn't change anything between the week before? See, what most people do is they, they do the same thing this week they did last week. So how, how do you get any better? You've got to change it. Okay. And you've got to, like you said, map your, from, on that Sunday, that's right. that Sunday evening, map out your plan to change that's right. to get to that next level. And, and who? Right? There, there's a popular concept that called who, not, not how, or who, not what, or whatever. It's a who. See, when I spend time with him, it makes me, I'll be better. Tomorrow when I give a talk down there in Orlando, I'll be better today because I spent some time with him. I'll connect better with people. I'll, I'll be better. So what I see a lot of people do is they replicate the same thing week after week after week. Okay? Saturday's typically my day off. I take one day off a week. Uh, Saturday's, uh, I let my mind out to play spend time with my kids, uh, but I typically study or listen to somebody on Saturday, very successful, somebody who's really done something. We'll listen to their interviews, if I go out and ride my bike, right? Now, because of that, when I come in on Monday, I'm smarter than I, le than I was when I left on Friday. He said something earlier which gave me a better idea on selling events. He talked about an activating event, and I went out and told my sales team, I said, look, when you're talking about coming to the lodge, you need to start saying we believe that there's certain, thing, the certain activating events in your life that change the trajectory of your life. And because of that belief, we host these events at our lodge that we believe are activating events, right? Because that's in alignment with my prey drive concept. Now, once you come to the event, the reason you need the coaching, 
Right? Jim and Renee, you need to coach them because now you need persistence and intensity, right? So you come to the lodge, but then you really need the coaching because if not, you get activated, but you don't have the persistence and intensity you need. So I was using his phrases to say this is how we can better position this in the market. Because I do believe when you come to the lodge, it's an activating event. It activates something inside of you, okay? So we're going to get into goals, vision, nitty-gritty, okay? Very, very important. And then, but you got to commit to doing this. Like he said, I can't give you, I can't give you this desire to do this, okay? It's typically the last thing I do every night is I sit down with my remarkable and I drop the next day. My mind's relaxed. I've kind of, the kids are in bed. And I just sit around and think about what do I want to do? What, do I, what, what are my level 10 opportunities? Who are my blue marlin relationships? Who's in my red zone? Okay, and 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 uh, you know how do I how do I move the ball down the field toward what? What are we moving toward? Our B. Everything we do is moving toward our B. Low value or high value? Okay. So let's get into goals, vision, nitty gritty. I work off of a little notebook, and when I do um, when I'm doing this work for Forbes or when I'm in Alabama, they're trying to write to steal my, they're trying to buy my notebook. And here's, it's just one of those, it's just a real simple one, and let me talk about this deal. Let's do goals. People who have goals are happier people, much happier. But when they have goals and they realize their goals help other people, they're super happy. And there's a couple things that now they're growing but in addition, they realize that other people are catching it, catching the energy around them when they have the goals. So let's get into what we need to do the upper 3%. Tell somebody you're sitting with, I want to be an upper 3%. I want to be a upper 3%. That number keeps on coming up. Mark McCormick wrote a fabulous book called What They Didn't Teach You in Harvard School of Business. And in it, he makes a quote of something they found in what's called the stacks, not on the computer, at Harvard. They took 100 MBA students, and I think it was 1970, and taught them what I'm teaching you, to write down what you're doing every day. Big concept coming, ready? Your conscious mind is a post-it note. Your subconscious mind is a supercomputer. The winning is in that supercomputer. You don't want to teach yourself something some of the time. You do it all the time. Most people in life will tell you they're committed, but they're just interested. They're kind of people. Committed is very different. They're rare. You don't want to be interested. You want to be committed. The difference is interested is a feeling. Committed is a choice. It's a choice. And I choose it. I choose to do it. It's an action. People tell you that I'm interested. They're committed. No, they're not. No, they're not. Here's what interested people say. We already did it. Committed people say, no, we haven't done it all yet. Interested say, look how far we've come. Committed say, look how far we're going to go. Interested say, I can't do it. Committed say, I can't do it. Yet. I'm speaking of Philadelphia. This guy came up to me all my life. I need to lose weight. He said, I, I, I was committed till I met a brownie. Then I was interested. <laughs> he said, my little girl's kidneys quit working. Motivation. And she was getting dialysis. It killed me. And then we looked over for the perfect match for getting a kidney transplant. We found the perfect match. Him. But the doctor said, I'm not taking your kidney and putting your little girl to lose weight. Now, he's not interested. He's, and he said, in six months, I lost 101 pounds. So would you. <clears throat> Committed means my mind and spirit is a garden. Think like a gardener. And I'm going to plant every day. So he told, they were told at Harvard, write out your goals every day. Every day. Because we're now going after the post-it note, no, the supercomputer. I do, and I'll get to in a little bit, three areas. Every day. Came back 10 years later. 
84 did not do it. They were interested. 13 did it in their head. They made twice as much money. Three out of 100, 3% again, did every day. They made 10 times as much money. Did you catch that one? I know y'all came for something complicated. <laughs> but I told you I'm from West Virginia. <laughs> now, let's go to West Virginia in your goals. I saw you had some Jim Collins books out there, Built the Last and all that. Now, Jim Collins wrote Good to Great. He's a graduate of Stanford with his PhD. They're known for Nobel Prizes. I'm a graduate of West Virginia University. We are known for moonshine. <laughs> My grandparents were moonshiners on one side, coal miners on the other. He said a statement that is powerful, everybody loves, but I quite frankly disagree with. He says the enemy of great is good. I don't believe that. The enemy of great is realistic. If you look at, I'm going to compliment him, embarrass him. This ain't realistic. I don't mean to hurt his feelings, but him from a coach to this, that ain't, and I walk around looking at this and go, he ain't realistic. This ain't realistic. Y'all got to get unrealistic with your goals. This don't make, the, the success factory and all, that don't make no sense. It ain't supposed to. You need to get unrealistic. You got to get faithistic. You got to believe you have to have faith in faith. You got to believe that I believe different and go show it because faith is a verb. Everybody say this to me. I got to get unrealistic. They laugh to know it too. Let them laugh at you. Let them laugh at you. When I told them what I was going to do back in my hometown, I mean, I was a terrible. So I told you I come home, there's a report card. Look at that report card. I told them what I was going to be when I was growing. They laughed at me. They ain't laughing now. You ain't got to get to the point. You got to be unrealistic. You know, I walk around. I just walk around this thing and say, good night. Look at this dream. What happened? Now, here's the deal. If you ask him about his unrealistic, he's going to tell you, I didn't come this far. They come this far. That's what he's going to tell you. You know, I like it. I'm sitting back there listening. Did you hear who he says consulting with? Paul Mitchell. You know what Paul Mitchell does? Is that just me? <laughs> he said, yeah, I'm out there consulting for Paul Mitchell. I said to my... <laughs> Would you say that's unrealistic that he's worked with Paul Mitchell? Is it just me? <laughs> we got to get unrealistic. So I need you to get to a point where you got unrealistic goals. Because J.K. Rowling, Tyler Perry, Steve Jobs, Kathy, you know, the whole Kathy Hughes, ain't unrealistic. I, you know what I honestly said to me? He's more unrealistic than you. I just said that. He, he's more unrealistic than you. I, you know, there, my, my, where I'm from, everybody got a name like that. The guy that works for me, he got Eric work with him. I, where I'm from is Snake. Everybody got a name like that. Snake, Possum, Dirty Weasel. <laughs> Dirty Weasel's my sister. <laughs> you know what I said to him? I said, we ain't going to go. New He's giving me this guy's name. I'm going to say this guy's name. might get on the internet. He might get mad. He's crazy. I said, we're going to now see Coach Burt because he's. That's what we need. So, three of them wrote them every day. They made 10 times as much money. Do simple better. Just write them out every day on your notebook. Do simple better. I'm going to write this out every day because I ain't trying to train the post-it note. I'm trying to train the supercomputer. Let me explain to you what the supercomputer is. Ready? I'll show you the supercomputer. You don't live in circumstance, you live in Vision. is the supercomputer because he's heard me 18 zillion times. I said, if I pass out right here, they do CPR me and cart me out. He'll finish it and not miss a word. 
He didn't come here to hear nothing new. He came here with his supercomputer. That's what he came for with. I want you to decide on not a zillion things. Less arrows, more wood. Less arrows, more wood. What's the one thing that you could do that would change your life, would change other people's life? And if you knew if you couldn't miss, you'd do it. What helps people get through adversity is they got a vision. He was talking about Mary and Martha. I loved one thing that was, I, I, I was saying something said to Mary, Mary, there's so many things out there, but only a few things matter. There's so many things out there, Mary, but only a few things matter. Quit paying attention to what doesn't matter and go grow. You know, I got a phrase I say when people ask me stuff. That's interesting. What you be? I ain't got none. I don't have an opinion. I am not, I don't need one. I know y'all get into all kinds of different, I don't have, my mind's a simple place. So I, I'm asking you to write it over and over and over because when you do and you write it out. Now, I'm up in, uh, I, I just, this happened to me recently. I broke a rib all uh, Labor Day. We're, we're riding bi our bikes and my cousin's wife's in front. He goes, look, there's a goat. She stops her bike. I go over the handlebars, I break a rib. You know, so I had that deal. And so I, I went through it once before and I was up speaking in Boston. You kind of, when you, if you've been through it, it's kind of painful. You forget where you are and stuff. So I left, I, I lost my wallet up in uh, Boston. I left it in a, on a Thursday, getting out of a cab, I think, or at the airport. But you know what I started doing? I started meditation. Thanks for returning my wallet. Thank you. I'm so, I, I'm the kind of guy that's grateful on credit. I, I'm thankful for stuff where I got it because I know it's coming. I, I'll start thanking and, and being thankful for something I ain't even received yet. I, 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 my, my sister's professor in English, I said, talk to me in the past tense. I write mine like they're already here. I just, I just need to find a way to receive it. I, I believe it's already here. So I, 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 I was, I, I thank you for turning that wallet. That is so good. Thank you. I, I can't believe it. That happened Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Monday, my doorbell rang. I knew it was at that door. Handed me my wallet. Said it was in a box. I opened up. Now, the money was gone, but the credit card was there. So I was good. Okay, you're going to have some of that money. But I, 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 you got to do it on, you have to do it on credit. You, you got to do everything past tense like it's already here. And so I write it out like it's already here. And so you already just do, you write out them goals, you already here. Now, I'm not all that big, to be honest with you, on the end result. I'm on the process, which I'll get into in nitty gritty in a minute. But I start with the vision. I start with the vision. Now, I'm very, I'm not, I'm being vague on it because you write it how you want, but I write it on like it's already here. And what I do is then I rewrite it every day so it's up in my head because I'm going after that supercomputer. Now, if you go to Asheville, North Carolina, in the middle of the town is a big whiteboard. It says, before I die, I will. If I'm lying, I'm crying, I ain't shed a tear. When I was there last time, it said, before I die, I will. Somebody wrote, see the Cleveland Browns win. I go, okay, you, you, you can go your happy eternity now. They, kind of, you, they're good now, right? That's what somebody wrote, right? But people come in, before I die, I'm going to ask you to marry me. Before I, the next 90 days, I will. That's what I want. The next 90 days, I will. I'm into the 90 day, we do it in the finance. The next 90 days, we do something called the 90 day year up in here. The next 90 days, and then rewrite it again. People say, do you need long-term goals? Yeah, you do not long-term goals, but you got to keep on redoing those things. The next 90 days, I will. And write out what it is. And, and, and I think you go to less errors. And then this is from a book, Measure What Matters, is the Deloitte study. When you tell somebody and that becomes illuminated, it becomes simple, and we'll get to measurable in a minute. Deloitte study, your 92% chance, a greater chance of getting it when you tell people, like he just did, here's where I'm headed. Now, he got his big goal about the success factory, but to get there, the next 90 days, I will. The next nine, everybody say, next 90 days I will. The next 90 days I will. And that's how I write it out on that thing, that here's where I'm going the next 90 days. Now, be careful, 
because you said next 90 days I'll lose 15 pounds. Be careful with some of that because you can lose eight, get mad and eat three pizzas and drink it. You know how it gets some day. I've been there. So you, we are, you, you are, you have a relationship with the goal, but it's not an emotional relationship. It's a change the process relationship. I say this to myself all the time. There's no misery, just attachments. You're attached to the goal, but not emotionally. I haven't made that kind of money yet. I'm now going to quit because I'm frustrated. I didn't get my health to that point. So now for I'm going to quit. I did not find that person I want to spend my life with the next 90 days. So I'm going to go out and uh, I'm going to quit. I'm going to get them big fuzzy slippers and get them big curlers in my hair just watch TV. You, 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 you got to a point and say, I'm not going to. I have a relationship, but it's not emotional relationship with it. It's a process. And I'm asking you to write out the next 90 days I will. I do three areas. One, my health. Because if you don't take time to get healthy, you're going to take time to get sick. I work on my health. This is what I'm, I, and I, I sort of argue out of Columbia called straight line eating. I'll get nitty gritty. I lay out my food before I get into that day. Someone asked me, I lay out my food. I lay out my exercise. I lay out my meditation before I walk into that day. But here's where I'm taking my body next 90 days. You, hey. You know, I learned something when I was over out of the United States. You don't miss something till you don't have it no more. You ain't gonna miss your you ain't gonna miss your health till you ain't got it. That's when you're gonna miss it bad. Get healthier. Get get healthy. Get get, get yourself. I gotta get me some more water. Get yourself hydrated. Get get your diet right. Get your exercise right. Cause it's my one's my health. George Valiant did a 49 year study at Harvard. The number one factor in happiness. Close connections and relationships with others. So I write down every day, I'm gonna get nitty gritty, but I, I wanna connect. I mean, I got me some friends. You know, I got a crew that I go to church with every Saturday night. We hang out. I got a crew we do Friday night. I got people around here. I got Coach. I got Coach Saban. I talk to him every day. I get I, you, you, close connections with other people is the number one factor. 49 you're studying people being happy. We need each other. We have time. We'll get into connection here. There's a little town called Rosiata, Pennsylvania. People live longer in Rosiata and in the town United States. They go study why. Worst diets in the world. Every home had a big front porch. They're all from Italy. And they sit with each other and they connect and they care. And they live a long time. Here's what's wrong today. Little boy's trying to hit a doorbell. Can't reach. The priest comes by. Let me help you, little man. Here's a doorbell. It's not a little boy. He says, what now? Now, run like hell. Let's get out of here. Take your time. And every day, so I'm going to call it. I just in the back of the room said to my neighbor, I said, I called him. I go, I want us to become even closer friends. I'll call somebody just, I just came up a minute ago, gave me away what I call DWD. I go, you're doing good. And I told him exactly what. So I try to every day encourage somebody. I try to connect with somebody. I went back room and encouraged my daughter. That was, they, I got that out intentional in front of me. And if I need to, I'm going to forgive somebody today. You know, forgiveness, I understand forgiveness as a success, I mean, as a spiritual principle, a psychological principle. I think it's a fabulous success principle. Claire Barton's trying to start the uh, American Red Cross. Somebody comes up and hugs her, walks away. Her friend said, why you hug her? Don't you remember what she did to you? Claire Barton said, I distinctly remember forgetting about that. So... I have first, here's what I'm going to do with my health. Here's my meditation. I, I, I'm going to say, if y'all don't like it, I'm sorry if I offend you. I meditate on the 23rd Psalm three times a day. I read it out. It's the last thing I read to my mom before she passed. I do HIIT training every day. I warm up for 10 and I drive my heart rate up. Then I do vegan. Coach just gave me some vegan soup in the back room back there. But he didn't realize that Coach Saban would come up and end that and I might end his career for him. But that is okay. I had to take advantage of him right there. So... <laughs> Coach, that's a, no, I ain't going to go there. So what we're going to do is, here's what I'm going to do every day. And the last thing is my, is my, is my career. Is my, and I don't call it my career. Why am I different? I call it my calling. This ain't my career. This is what I'm called to do. I just talked to Coach about something he was called to do. I said, you keep me called for that. Keep getting ready for some attack. That's when you get called for stuff. But it's my calling. So I'm going to get better at it. 
I'm going to work at it. I'm going to present ideas to somebody. And I'm going to ask for business. And I detail that before the day comes. And so I write it and rewrite it every day in my supercomputer. Now, I'm going to get back to, can I get into competition? Better versus best goals. <coughs> better versus best. So here's the difference between better versus best. People have goals that I'm going to be the best that there is. I hear that all the time. I'm the best that there is. Those people that are the best, and there's others say, I'm going to get better today than what I was yesterday. The people who have best goals, when they have adversity and failure, they quit. I was worried my daughter never got a B in her life. And I was worried when she went away to school, what was going to happen when she got a B? Because when I go with the chancellor and the president of Alabama, I'll ride with some. He'll be getting these calls on the, on the radio because somebody got a B and they're quitting school. The people that get what they call, I want to get better, they are battle tested. And when something happens, they go, how can I take they, they It stings. But then they come back and go, how can I take this to get better? But with the others say, this is evidence that I'm not the best. And they quit. They, they quit because here's the evidence. I'm not the best, so why go on? But I want to get better. means I'm going to take this battle-tested, who from the do, and change my behavior, take the next step. So when you're doing the goals, you're trying to get better. And if you do that, you're competitive with you. Better versus best. I want you to write them every day. Next, I work with New Orleans Saints years ago. There's a player there by the name of Darren Howard played at Kansas State. And all the veterans are using me. He's not, so they're on him. You too good, rookie. You too good. So he sat down with me. We did what's called a visualization to see it over and over in your brain. You know, old Maxwell Malt stuff to keep on seeing over and over in the game. So I had him visualize, come around the corner, stripping the quarterback, scooping the ball up, running for a touchdown. It don't always go this way, but in the game that week, he came around the corner, stripped the quarterback, scooped the ball up, ran for a touchdown. When I came in the building the next week, he was inside the door going, you got some more of that? <laughs> it don't always go that way. Michael Phelps, Olympiad of our time, he would play the tape every day of every race. He jumped in the water to a 200 butterfly in Beijing, the Olympics. His goggles broke. So he said to himself, play the tape. Because it wasn't in his post-it note, it was in his supercomputer. So he did the race, not knowing where the wall is, and it was in his head. Hit the wall, came back for the finish. Not know where the finish is, he kept on saying, play the tape. Completely blind, goggles full. Hit the wall, looked up and it said, Michael Phelps, world record. He did it without seeing because it was in his supercomputer. Visualize it. Wire them neurons. See it. Let it be no surprise when you get there. It already happened. In the press conference the next day, they said, what happened? He said, my goggles broke. How'd you do that? He said, played the tape. Your mind's plastic. You guys, you mo play that tape. Play that tape. You just play it over and over. What I do every turn. The Australians were down under when it came to yachting. Their last place every day. You got to be committed. I'm glad y'all are here, but you got to be committed. You got to want it. You know, you, peace. You got to want peace. The point that somebody's going to say something stupid, you're going to just bless them. Happy, you got to want happy. I mean, you got to want that. You, are, you ain't just going to stumble on it. Now, the nasty stuff, it'll find you. Anger, disappointment, grudge. You ain't got to look for none of that. Peace, joy. You, you got to want that bad. 
you got to really want that. So the Australians listen to a recording every day of them going around every single band. There's a movie about it, and they got a big plaque up in Rhode Island about it. And the Australians went through every band. They were last place every year ever in the World Cup. Every band in groups of two, three times a day for four years. They listen to this recording. They want it. They interviewed Supercomputer, the captain. Are you shocked? That you want it. He said, we already won this thing 5,000 times. What y'all making a big deal about? You see where I'm taking you? You want to keep planting that garden. There ain't no room for the weeds because what you planted got its roots so deep, nothing else can come up in there. Keep planting grass, don't pull weeds. You plant what you want so much, there ain't no room for the rest of this. You plant it so much, you ain't got no room after a while. And then it gets deep down in you. I'm going to teach you something called cellular memory when it gets deep down in you. If one of you ever, this is from a doctor I was reading about a heart transplant. If one of you ever get a heart transplant, you'll pick up the urge as a person's heart that you got. If they like beer, you're gonna start drinking beer. If they eat chocolate, you're gonna start liking chocolate because you do it so much it gets in you. Incidentally, if one of you get my heart, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> that don't need to get out in public about that. That's me and you. You want to get it down in your cells. You want to get down in you. So I'm going to finish this part. We're going to get into nitty gritty in a second. Okay, so what you're going to do is in that little notebook, y'all got that groovy little notebook. And you know what? I'm going to send this to you, coach. I got all this stuff in a virtual notebook that I'm doing because I'm, I'm doing a big deal with a pharmacy company coming up. I, I'm doing a, a, another. That's, that's just next week. And we're doing an all-day seminar. I'm doing this with all the uh, Huntsville school districts. And so the first thing, I got a virtual deal. I'm gonna send, I can send all of you. I'll get the coach. who will get it to you. But write it out every day. And I have a virtual deal. I'll send it to you. But we write it out first. Here's where I'm going to go with my health. Here's what I'm going to do with my relationships. And here's what I'm going to do every single day um, with my calling. And write out like this. It's next 90 days, I will. Then I'm asking you to, before you go to bed, visualize it. However you do, I'm not trying to proselytize you to my religion, but whatever you do, pray, whatever you do. But I want to advise you one thing. Put good stuff in your head before you go down, and then you're going to sleep better, and you're not going to have them nightmares. You know, just put something in your head good. Put plant, plant something good before you go down. And then when you get up, visualize it again. And visualize where you are with your health, with those relationships, and where you are with, where you are with your calling. First part, people... Write out the goals. Say this out loud. Next 90 days, I will. Say it. The next 90 days, I will. So now we ain't worried about how do I come back, how am I battle tested. Because what I do is everything that happened that tested me was strengthening me to prepare me for that goal. And the blessing's already here. All that battle is trying to do is prepare you to receive it. I'm going to go off the nitty gritty in a second. But coach, anything you got, you go ahead on goals. So I was thinking, and we'll let you take a break before we get into nitty gritty. Uh, when I was 25 years old, I sat on the beach in Florida. When I was 25 years old, I sat on the beach in Florida with a yellow notepad. And I wrote out 10 things I was going to manifest in the next 10 years. I was going to win a championship. I was going to write a best selling book. I was going to have a place on the ocean. I was going to make a million dollars. Right? There's 10 things that I literally just me and my thoughts on a, on a beach. And I lost that. A uh, piece of paper when I was moving houses and then 10 years later I found it and guess what happened every everything I had written down I had done we won a championship I had a place on the ocean I made a million dollars I'd read a best-selling book right and at that time I wouldn't write them down every day what he's talking about that supercomputer is programming into the subconscious mind telling your brain this is what's gonna happen over and over and over and over and over and over and over. You don't know it, but I bought this place here. I initially went on a cruise. I went on a cruise ship, and they were doing financial seminars on a cruise ship for elderly people. And I was 25 years old, and I snuck in the back. And what they're trying to get these elderly people to do, which are typically wealthy because they were on these cruises, was to take their, their retirement and roll it over to them. And I sat in the back, and I thought, man, wouldn't it be... And I had a big revelation. Inspirational things happen in inspirational places. 
what, what if I could coach people on a cruise? Then I started going, how do I buy properties that, that I could do this, right? And so I did my first cruise. 20 people signed up. One company sent 16 people. At the last minute, those 16 backed out, and it was one company with four people who went with me on the first cruise. And they got a lot of special attention from me on that cruise. <laughs> and they're like, how do we hang out with you the whole time, coach? But, but it, this concept of telling your brain, in my, in my notebook to what he's saying, I've got, I just got a, I got a tab called uh, B. And what I do is I just write it up. If you can see, I just write it up over and over and over. My 20, 2022 things I'm going to manifest. I do a lot of mental mapping. And what I'm really doing is I'm telling my brain this is what's going to happen. It works for me. I don't work for it. Okay? So that was one thing. Second thing is, before we won a championship, I brought in a championship rings for the players to wear. And uh, a big gold ball, a big replicated gold, gold uh, ball. And I would, they would walk by it every day. And I'd say, what does it feel like to wear a championship ring? And, you know, because you're a champion and we're going to be champions, right? And there's, there's all these things I used to do with the players. Um, but one of the things I'll close this session with on connection is when I went to college, I went nine years to get three degrees, and I don't remember really any of my college professors. Now, that's a lot of college credit not to remember, okay? It's like 360 hours of college credit, except one professor. And one professor I had one day came to me. I was in the very back of the room, and she came to me, and she said, Mr. Burke, can I walk you to your next class? And I'm like, you want to walk me to my next class? Like, like I'm a terrible student. I sit in the back. I got a head, my head, hat on, my head down. I was very shy and insecure when I was 18, 19 years old. And she said, yeah, I want to walk you to your next class. And I said, okay. And we walked to class, and she just talked to me. How's it going? How's your family? Uh, right? She said, I see a lot of potential in you. And I'm like, really? Like, you see potential in me? She said, yes, sir. And then she said this, what can I do to be a better professor so you can reach your potential? And I thought, man, she was interested in me. And so the, the next class, I moved from the back to the front. I went from being the worst student to the best student. And, man, that changed everything for me because that one person believed in me. They said when Garth Brooks came to Nashville, he, he literally quit within the first 19 hours of coming to Nashville. He had, took one meeting, and one meeting told him, son, he said, how much money are you making in Oklahoma playing music? He said, $700 a night. And he said, you ought to just get in that car and drive straight back to Oklahoma. And he did. And he was so embarrassed because people would walk up to him and say, now, what are you doing, man? Like, we raised money for you to go to Nashville. You're going to be a big star. And so he, so he kind of hid out for months and months and months where nobody could see him. And one guy came to him and said, now, you are going to go back to Nashville, aren't you? And you are going to do this, aren't you? And, and so he went back a second time. First seven people told him no. Right? And he had a little business manager that believed in him. And they were driving down the road one day, and the business manager pulled over, and he said, look, you need to chill out. You're going to be a big star. And Garth Brooks said, all it took was one person believing in me. And when that dude told me that day, chill out, you're going to be a big star, I began to believe it. Now, as the story goes, he was playing at the Bluebird the very next night, and he was scheduled to be in the very last slot. And somebody who was in the number two slot didn't show up. They were late. And they went to Brooks and they said, will you sh sing in his place? The record label people came to see the guy in the second spot. But they saw Garth Brooks instead. And as immediately, the same people that told him no, seven times, after they saw him perform, walked up to him and said, we'd like to sign you to a record deal. And that's hence his story. Went on to sell 100 million albums, whatever. But, but, it, but think about the power of one person believing in you and the connection, the importance of connection to people. So when I was a basketball coach, to end the story, at the end of every day, I would go get a player. And I'd say, hey, let's you and I go for a walk down at the football stadium. And I would literally take one player at the end of every day, and we'd walk around that football stadium. And I'd just talk to him. How's your family? How's your grades? And then I would ask that magical question, which was what? What can I do? to be a better coach for you. And they would say, coach, like, man. Sometimes they say, well, wait, maybe the way you say it to me, I could do this, or, you know, I'd play harder for this, or, and I'd say, thank you, okay? I'll, I'll do my best to be a better coach for you. And that one walk changed the nature of our relationship forever.
as a coach. Those kids would play so hard for me. Uh, Forty percent of them have me in their phone as dad. Dad's calling. When they get in trouble, they call me first before they call their parents. And they'd say, look, I know I'm going to get in trouble with you, so let's go ahead and get it out of the way. And I'm going to call my dad next. I'm going to get in trouble with him, but I'm going to call you, right? That's the kind of relationship. So connection, when he talked about one of his goals is connection, you know, we live in such a this transactional world that you've got to get better at connecting to people. And that takes effort, right or wrong? It takes effort at the end of the day when I've been coaching all day to connect to my wife. So we just sit. We've got where we just sit at the end of our bed and we just talk. We just talk about the day, about the kids, about life, about whatever we went through. It takes, it takes effort to sit down and connect with your kids, man, for just a few minutes and, and spend time with them. It takes effort. That's why so many people are bad at it because it just takes a lot of effort. So connection, that's one. One of the goals you work on every day. Calling, okay? And the third one was health, okay? And, and uh, this big, you know, I lost 30 pounds at a time where I, I really just said, man, i got to get in better shape. i got to get in better shape. And that's a decision, a simple decision that I made, okay, to, to play at a very high level, okay. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back, and we got one more good session. Then we'll take any Q&A, and then we'll get you out of here for the day, okay. And, and here's the deal. Question for you. How does this turn into monetization for your business? Can it? Yes or no? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. See, when you wire your brain together, and you get down and you do these things, what's going to happen is you're going to be much better. You are going to be much better. And the market's going to recognize that, that you have made a decision to leave your amateur desires behind and made a decision to go pro. Right? And, then, and that's when you're going to make the pro money. There's a reason the pros make so much money, more money than the amateurs do. Okay? Because they're that good. All right? So that's really the decision you're making today. So battle-tested is a mindset that turns into a skill set that ultimately turns into monetization for you because the world's going to recognize you. I'm excited about tomorrow because it's me and Lou Holtz, and I'm a competitor. So, so I'm going to go down there and give my best effort so they go, Lou who? <laughs> I want them to say, who's that little, who's that little bald-headed dude? Because I didn't know who he was, right? It's going to be fun, man. It's going to be fun. So all right, let's take a short break, and then we'll come on back.